Scott Field in Starkville ready for the kickoff. The deep back, number 39, John Moore, a wide receiver. He's a junior from Philadelphia, Mississippi. Will take the kick off the foot of Dirk Borgonone. He's a freshman from Reno, Nevada. This game is underway. Moore at the three. Penalty marker down, and Moore is down at the 24. Initial hit for the University of Tennessee by defensive back Kelly Day, a 21-yard return, and there will be a penalty. The man in the white hot hat is today's referee, Rom Gilbert, the penalty against the Bulldogs. So they'll have to start in the hole. Well, as you can see last week, Bob, in the uh, Florida University of Miami game, field position is such an important Holding. factor. Run back! First down! They move it back to the 10-yard line where Albert Williams, the redshirt freshman, will lead the Mississippi State Bulldogs. He's 6'2", 200 pounds from Jackson. Williams is the key to this offense. He is a great runner, 111 yards last week. However, there are question marks about his arm. Gary Frank, a true pro prospect at the strong tackle position. He's number 54. Keep your eye on Gary Frank. About four yards goes Hank Phillips, the starting tailback, the junior from Meridian. He'll be trading off with David Bear, that great young rookie running back. And there's Tennessee's defense, a real question mark at the nose guard position. Can McCray do the job against a good offensive line? Kelly Ziegler, Tennessee's senior linebacker, he's the leader on defense. Really good corners in McDaniel and Pepper, probably the two fastest corners in America. And the safeties are hard hitters, but they're young and relatively untested for the Tennessee defense. It is second down, six. Rodney Peters, the fullback, is from Tucker, Georgia. And the senior gets a couple. It'll be a third down conversion. Situation for the Bulldogs of Mississippi State. Bob, Mississippi State's going to be conservative early on offense. They don't want to shake up Albert Williams. They don't want him to make any major errors. What he does best with the football at, at times is improvise. Didn't throw the ball that much last week. They really didn't have to. And uh, I can't wait to see the young man begin to unload it because he's got a great arm. Third down. He's going to throw it. Straight drop back. It is complete over the middle for the first down to the tight end, Jesse Anderson, a sophomore from nearby West Point, Mississippi, part of this Golden Triangle area here with Columbus, Starkville, and West Point. And uh, Rocky Felker likes him. Little straight back, looking to the weak side all the way, Bob. Get the back in the flat, tight end, trying to slide across, across the middle. But Jesse Anderson, as you mentioned, a converted linebacker, 230-pounder, and he's, he's got the speed to get deep, too. First down, 10 Bulldogs. From the 24, just underway, Scott Field, Starkville, Mississippi. 79 degrees, very good. That's Hank Phillips, number 29. He drops the ball. Tennessee has recovered the fumble at the 15-yard line. The eighth caused turnover by the Tennessee Volunteers. Darren Miller fell on it after a great run by Hank Phillips of 65 yards. Terry McDaniel punched it loose. Terry, Terry McDaniel does an excellent job here at the completion of this run. But look at the offensive line for Mississippi State work. A broken tackle by Phillips, and now it's a foot race. And look at McDaniel. Not too many people are going to run away from him. Watch him grab the ball. Watch his right hand. Now drags across the ball and tears it out from Hank Phillips. On the first down, Tennessee out of the tailback. Out to the 21-yard line, the freshman Reggie Cobb. Here's the Tennessee offense. Junior Jeff Francis leads the way. He's from Mount Prospect, Illinois. Nobody recruited him up in the Midwest when he came to Tennessee. The man to watch, 34, Reggie Cobb. His high school idol was Herschel Walker at Georgia. That's why he wears 34. Harry Galbraith, the best offensive lineman for Tennessee, and they have a good offensive line, particularly between the guard positions. Cobb to the 33-yard line. Let's look at the Mississippi State defense, and they're going to have to be looking at this Tennessee run all day long. And Anthony Butts, who has not performed as well as a lot of folks thought he would coming out of high school, is the man under pressure in the middle. A strong core of solid linebackers for Mississippi State. And Bo Russell is probably the leader back there, but Milton Smith's a tough little cornerback. First and ten, Volunteers. Off to the left side. Not much this time. Stop 
at the 35-yard line. He was hit by 38 James Williams. Just an excellent play by Williams. The strength of that Bulldog defense is the linebacking core. And uh, they've just played, they played exceptionally well last week. And as you mentioned, though, Bob, earlier on, it's, it, we, we really don't know how strong Southwest Louisiana is. For Tennessee, second down eight from the 35. Jeff Francis has receivers on a slot right formation. Play fake, brings it out to the right side. Thomas Woods, short of the first down. He was hit by Michael Taylor, number 28. So Francis now one for one. Thomas Woods is a sophomore from Gallatin, Tennessee. Tennessee loves to throw it out quickly to the receiver. Well, they've got those guys on the outside. They're just so exciting to watch. And, you know, you can hear the afterburners come on when Terrence Cleveland gets a ball or Woods or Anthony Miller in a pass. And it's just exciting. And you have a, you're, you've got a problem on defense. You don't know if you take a man out there to defend against that or defend against the run. Bob. Gets it to about the 47-yard line. Second tackle of the game for 38 James Williams, the right outside linebacker for the Mississippi State Bulldogs. Rocky Felker. They're calling it Rocky II here in Starkville in second week. Rocky, the old quarterback at Mississippi State, has really revitalized this program here. And he, he doesn't miss a beat. He reminds me a little bit of George Allen. He scrimmaged these guys a, a few weeks ago at noon to get them ready, ready for our early starting time with TBS. Second down six from the 47-yard line. No score in the ball game. Nick's up in the backfield. Penalty flags everywhere. We have 10.49 to go in the first quarter. Mississippi State was moving the ball, had a first down, handed it off to their starting tailback, Hank Phillips. He broke it up the middle. Offense. Ball start on the offense. It moves back to the 42. Phillips broke it up the middle, ran it 65 yards to the Tennessee 15, where the ball was pulled loose by Terry McDaniel and fallen on by Darren Miller, and that's where the volunteers took over. No score in the game. Second and 13, Tennessee now. Looked like a back move to the left side. May have been the freshman. I think it's going to be another Tennessee procedure penalty. Ball, ball. ball start. Interior, Interior lineman move, says our referee, Rom Gilbert. Looked like a right tackle. Is that Eric Still? It's hard to see the numbers for them this angle. They play strong tackle and what they call quick tackle, which is away from the tight end. Johnny Majors really got him on a roll. He got a little bit upset him halfway through last year, and now seven in a row. Second and 18. Out of time for Francis. Complete to the tight end, Middlebrooks. He gets back to the 42-yard line. Milton Smith, who's just 5'9", made the tackle. And he is a fiery little competitor. You watch this young man. They'll try to throw it over his head to Harper, probably, because Harper's 6'5", and Milton's 5'9". Good job by the secondary at Mississippi State. Now, come on, Milton. Come up, make the tackle. Stop him right there. They got three yards, and you won. Third down eight, Tennessee, from their own 47-yard line. Three-man rush. Francis all day to throw it. It's complete to number five. Thomas Woods, first down, volunteers inside the 40-yard line of the Bulldogs. 14-yard gain on the first down pass completion. See Bernard McCullough working. He's trying to jam Woods there. Woods avoids the jam and just begins to drift inside. Now, at that time, the pressure should have taken over from Mississippi State. They chose to rush just three linemen. And as you know, Bob, these receivers are smart enough to find that open area and get three. complete down the near sideline that's Reggie Cobb the freshman running back touchdown Tennessee <laughs> 39 yard touchdown pass with 914 to go quarter number one Tennessee has scored first with Francis connecting with the freshman sensation Reggie Cobb last year's defensive dilemma for Mississippi State was their inability to tackle people downfield. Once they broke through the linebackers, the, uh, the secondary just had a hard time taking them to the turf, and a couple of missed tackles allowed Reg Reggie Cobb to take that ball into the end zone. 
point after by Phil Rich is good. Tennessee leads seven to nothing. You're watching SEC football on the Turner Broadcasting System. Reggie Cobb catches the touchdown pass. Jeff Francis is four for four on this drive. This time Mississippi State rushing four. They had four men going deep. You see Middlebrook occupied McCullough, and Bennett gets there to make the stop, but misses. And uh, I think Tennessee expected a two-deep zone there, trying to get those people down the middle and then spread those safeties, but it was a three-deep zone. Reggie Cobb from Knoxville, Tennessee said he never really considered going anywhere else, always wanted to play for the Volunteers. 85-yard scoring drive. That came after Hank Phillips had run for 65 yards, broken it up the middle for the Bulldogs. He was tackled at the 15 by Terry McDaniel. McDaniel pulled the ball loose. Darren Miller fell on it. Then Tennessee drove it 85 yards up three. And that reminds you of the Tennessee defense of two years ago. As you mentioned, opportunistic, and they're causing things to happen. They're giving the ball to their offense. Organoni puts it in the end zone, and it's going to be touched back by Moore. There have only been two kicks returned, and this being the early part of the third game for Tennessee. This young kicker can really get it into the end zone. Reggie Cobb, you're going to be hearing us talk about him all day long. Now, Rocky Felker also has a young running back you haven't seen yet. That's number 44 for Mississippi State, David Fair, who's a freshman from Starkville. It's interesting as Cobb comes out of Knoxville, the hometown of the University of Tennessee, and here's David Fair, and he's in there now at tailback. You'll like this young man. 6 20. First and 10, Bulldogs from their corner. They fake. Hadley's there. Complete. Hadley had it, was knocked loose by McDaniel. Hadley almost caught the rebound and took it in. Well, the question marks about the strength of Albert Williams' arm can be answered. He's got a strong arm. Unquestionably, he rocket shipped this one out there. Hadley behind everybody. McDaniel hustles over from his cornerback position, pops the ball up, and eventually stays with it and tears it out. Terry McDaniel is an all-SEC performer, and he consistently is in the uh, the eye of the, uh, the hurricane for them and breaking things up, causing things to happen. Second down 10 from the 20. Albert Williams doesn't like the look of the Tennessee defense. First time out of the game for the Bulldogs. Terry McDaniel had the chance to make two defensive plays. He broke it up the first time. Hadley had another chance, and McDaniel was still there. Ohio State manhandling West Virginia. We'll keep you updated on all the scores around the nation today. Craig Sager will be in the studios. Halftime, post-game, during the game. Here, second down, 10 from the 20 Bulldogs. First quarter, 9.05 left. Tennessee leads 7-0. David Fair. Not much for the freshman. Tough to bring down. He gets uh, an extra yard or so in his own effort. It was Darren Miller, 45 and 49. Kelly Ziegler, Tennessee's pair of fine linebackers with a stop. David Fair last year was a uh, Proposition 48 athlete and as a result could not participate in, uh, in football here at Mississippi State. Paid his own way, went to school, and, and I really feel that first year is important to not be bothered with the hassles of the big-time pressures of uh, big-time football. It's third down seven, single setback is the fullback, Rodney Peters. Tennessee with a four-man rush. Williams going to have to tuck it in. He doesn't get it. Down to the, the 25, area. tripped up by Kelly Ziegler, and Mississippi State's Bulldogs will have to punt the ball away, and Kelly Ziegler is continuing that tradition of linebacking. You know, he might be the best-kept secret in America. I, I'd, it'd be hard, you'd be hard-pressed to find a linebacker that plays it more effectively. Look at him there, drop back into his own, does an excellent job, and then come up and knock the feet out from the fleet-footed young quarterback. Ziegler has turned out to be the leader of this defense. A very poor punt. Tennessee's going to have good field position again. The ball to the 43-yard line. Tommy Parks with a problem on the punt. Andre Kramer with the return. You're watching SEC football on the Turner Broadcasting System. Along with Tim Foley, this is Bob Neal from Scott Field in Starkville, Mississippi. 7.42 to go in the first quarter. Tennessee leads 7-0 after an 85-yard drive following a fumble recovery at the Tennessee 15-yard line. 
34-yard pass from Francis to Reggie Cobb. Now it's 35 Howard and 34 Cobb in the Tennessee backfield. Francis has his man wide open. Terrence Cleveland couldn't hold on to it. Sophomore from Sweetwater, Tennessee, number four, Terrence Cleveland. Mississippi State thinks he's their best receiver now that Anthony Miller's out. They try to pump it to Woods, suck up the safety, and dump it in before the uh, Asa Bennett's able to get there. And uh, Bernard McCullough gets in a little after the whistle activity. Now Alvin Harper, the freshman, is lined up at the top of your screen. You see his long legs. He's 6'5". He may continue the Tennessee tradition of great receivers. Popped into the air. The pass was intended for Woods. It was hit by 38 James Williams who had good penetration, batted it out of the air at the line of scrimmage. Brings up third and 10 for Tennessee. You watch Ronnie Gray, the defensive coordinator for Mississippi State, gambling here. You actually couldn't see it, but they brought the free safety. They were coming with everybody. They decided they got to mix in some pressure. You know, you're afraid to leave your defensive backs one-on-one -on -one with these lightning rods that Tennessee has, has, but you have to, every once in a while, roll the dice. Third and 10 from the 43. Three wide outs, one tight end, only one setback. It's Howard. Francis, all day in the pocket. Can't find anybody. Down at the 48. The penetration and the sack by Bobby Barlow. One of the killer bees for the Mississippi State Bulldogs. A five-yard loss. Francis going back and looking. Good protection, good protection. Plenty of time to throw the ball as he scans the field, but there was just nothing there. A nice job of coverage by Dyer Carlisle's defensive backs from Mississippi State. Freshman is going to take the punt of Bob Garman. He's averaging 44 yards a punt. That one's not 44. Gets a good Tennessee roll, though. Goes out of bounds at the 13-yard line. No return on the punt by Bob Garman of 34 yards. And the Bulldogs will take over, trailing by a score of 7-0 with 6.54 to go in the first quarter from Scott Field in Starkville. Tennessee had a great opportunity there, Tim. They got the ball at their own 43 after the short 29-yard punt from Mississippi State. Couldn't convert anything. And the Mississippi State defense has to feel good about that. Uh, we, as we mentioned in the opening, we saw the Bulldog defense get manhandled by some teams at the end of the year, and, and they've got to have a confidence problem. Played with a lot of intensity last week, and they're stepping up to the plate today. David Fair and Marcus Bush in the backfield behind quarterback Albert Williams. Whee! Here's David Fair. Gets only a yard. Interestingly, he is an excellent back and has good, good movement, Tim. But the Tennessee defense is not giving Fair thus far a chance to get anything started. Well, as you know, they're well coached. You got Kenny Donahue coaching those down line. Then he's he's been around for a while and he has really done an excellent job preparing people to replace the injured Brian Hunt and Marco Vanek. Because this is their second team they're playing with here. Second down nine from the 14 for the Bulldogs. They give it to Bush. Finds the opening. First down. Out to the 26-yard line. Marcus Bush, the junior from Starkville, gets 12 yards. He's tackled by Tony Nelson, number six for Tennessee. Just an outstanding job on the right side of the line. Watch Stan Sims there. And Gary Frank brought Gary back over to defense, comes and closes it off in a nice trap by Durwood Miner. Top the hole. And here goes Hank's Phil Hank Phillips. He's seen more daylight today than he saw in the last six weeks last year. Interviewed Gary Frank at right tackle. He weighs 300 pounds. It's like shaking hands with a granite statue. First and 10 for 26. A fast granite statue. Albert Williams, pressure. There he goes. He's got 4-6 speed. Short of the first down. To the 47. Mark that the 33-yard line. Check that. Good quarterback pressure there by Richard Cooper, and he's been an interesting story. Had a good year two years ago, hurt last year, not playing much this year. Now, as a defensive coordinator, what do you want to do? Cooper misses. I'd rather have him throw the ball and run, I think. <laughs> you know, he's just like Don Smith in that sense. He scares you to death when he heads up field. Second down four from the 33. Has 4-6 speed in the 40-yard dash. 111 yards against Southwestern Louisiana last week, and only eight carries for that quarterback. Here's that option. Nothing happening on it. Extra effort close to the first down. That was Bush. He was hit right at the line of scrimmage, wrapped up by Cooper, and may have got an extra yard to and up for the first down. Spot looks like they may have it. When you don't have depth on your football team, what happens is as you begin to lose important players, 
uh, you lose some of your spunk and punch, and that's what happened to Mississippi State as the season went on last year. It was like a it was like a sprinter that was running a mile, and after the half mile, they didn't have anything left. They were just out of gas. But uh, they're strong. They play strong in the beginning of the year, and they're developing more depth. They've had another good recruiting year, and Rocky's been happy with that. They're developing more depth and size. Well, we're talking about Rocky Felker being so young, 34 years, seven and a half months, but he's not the youngest anymore. Mike Archer from LSU is at 34 years and 48 days. Three of the youngest coaches in the United States are SEC coaches. Archer, Felker, and Watson Brown at Vanderbilt. First and 10 from 36. Fair in motion. Williams over the middle has his man overthrew him. He was trying to find Fred Hadley, the junior from Tupelo. Hadley's a, a real speed burner. That's time remaining in the first quarter. Tennessee leads 7-0. Hadley's their home run man. They're going to try to get it to him behind everyone. I'm not, I'm not sure that he's a skilled ball carrier like some of these Tennessee, uh, Tennessee receivers are. They're almost like converted running backs with a lot of speed. And they, they scare you just as much as they have it in front of you as they do if they have it behind. Second down, 10. Bulldogs from their own 37 yard line. Loss on the play. They'll spot him right at the line of scrimmage, probably. Richard Cooper again making the tackle. So Cooper may be playing himself, himself back into starting role contention here. Just a quarterback draw. Try to get a set from the linebacker and find a hole. The linebackers, though, didn't get out of there. They really weren't uh, fooled by it, and they stuck up and in there close, were able to plug the hole. Cooper had been suspended from the team earlier this year. He's not even in the media guide, brought back to the team in a backup role. He is a senior. He's 6'5", 285, and a good player. Third down nine for the 38. Robert Williams has his man open. Incomplete. Good coverage. There's penalty marker. It'll be first down. It was Andre Kramer trying to cover Daryl Kennybrew, the junior from Atlanta. Now watch this. Well, we didn't really get to see him set up, but he looked as poised as any quarterback I've ever seen play. He's just, I, and I think that's the thing that's impressive. Andre Kramer tries to go across the front, and what happens? He hooked him with the right arm. Pass interference on that. You think it really was pass interference? That may be the second think, time you've ever seen him. Yeah, that, that might be. Now, Kevin Steele, a secondary coach in Tennessee, he doesn't agree, but uh, that might have been. Aren't you impressed with the poise of Albert Williams? And he's been under pressure already. I was impressed when we interviewed him yesterday uh, here at Scott Field. Uh, he looks like he's a junior or senior, not a freshman, the way he handles himself. First down 10 from the 48. Albert Williams from Jackson, Mississippi. Here's a pitch to Fair. Nice cutback. Extra effort. David Fair gets about seven. Cedric Klein with a stop for Tennessee. And if he gets on the scales, I'd bet on 230. I mean, he is a solid-looking horse, that guy. And just a real nice kid, chewing sunflower seeds out of practice, just real laid back. And it's amazing when he gets the ball, his personality changes. <laughs> second down, five from the 47. Mississippi State inside Tennessee territory for only the second time. And the last time, Hank Phillips fumbled the ball for Tennessee 15. They go to the front man, that's Rodney Peters. Peters near the first down marker. He was tackled by Kelly Ziegler. So Mississippi State now getting this drive with some momentum. Let's watch Kelly Ziegler as Johnny Majors looks on from Palmetto High School. Steps up there, gets rid of the blocker, Derwood Miner, and grabs a hold of Rodney Peters, throws him to the prescription athletic turf. Bulldogs started this drive at their own 13, and they now have it at the Tennessee 42. Power eye backfield. It's first down. Phillips dives inside the 40 to about 38. Hank Phillips. Six first downs already for the Bulldogs. They're capable of moving, apparently, against this Tennessee defense. I think a real interesting story is uh, Gary Frank, offensive tackle for Mississippi State. Last year, we saw him against Tennessee, lost as a nose guard as players ran around him. And now he is back on offense. That's where he belongs. He weighs 300 pounds. If you're looking at him, though, he doesn't look like 300 pounds, but he is rock hard. And uh, 
uh, one of the leading shot putters in the country and just an excellent he's going to be an excellent pulling guard in the nfl second and six Williams. couldn't find anybody kept looking over the left side and and i think hadley may have broken a pattern because fred hadley's talking to the sideline right now but i don't know where i was supposed to be there coach let's watch gary frank here sets up hands out it's his hands on cooper cooper tries to grab him but uh he's going nowhere tom good talked about that the offensive line coach from mississippi state he donated frank to defense they were having so much trouble last year he thought he'd be a good team player and donate a great player to him and uh he said i'm never doing that again. third down nine from the 41. bulldogs trailing tennessee seven to nothing we have one of seven to go in the first place. Here comes the blitz. Williams gets rid of it. First down to Hadley. Nice move. Hadley drives to the 27-yard line. Bulldogs keep the drive alive with 57 seconds to go in the first quarter. A 13-yard connection after good Ziegler pressure on the quarterback. Williams yelled out to the receivers. I'm sure automatic. This is a blitz route. Run the, run the slot man a little out pattern and there's Hadley. We said he wasn't as good a runner as some of these other people, but it made it prove me wrong. Ready? Bulldogs threatening inside the 30. First down 10. Tennessee leading by 7 and up. Closing moments for the first quarter. And off to number 21, Rodney Peters. He gets about six yards. You see, there's talk about a new quarterback. There's talk about flashy wide receivers, good running back. If you look at the different areas of a football team, and I had to pick one that was the most important, you go back to the offensive line every time. If you've got a good offensive line, there are enough skilled people that can fill in those other slots usually. Second down four from the 22, possibly the last play of the first quarter. John Moore split wide off the screen. They did not get the snap away. And that'll end the first quarter. When we come back, it'll be second down four. They take the long walk all the way to the other end of the field. Tennessee leads after one by a score of 7 nothing. Along with Tim Foley, this is Bob Neal at Scott Field in Starkville, Mississippi. It is 79 degrees at kickoff. It's supposed to be up about 85 today. The humidity is about a, oh, 180, 190, I think. They're the first quarter stats. Uh, they have umbrellas out in the stands here, and uh, the umbrellas are for the humidity that's falling. The sky is actually clear. Mississippi State with an edge in the rushing. Tennessee with the edge in the passing department. It's a 34-yard Francis to Cobb touchdown pass for Tennessee's and the game's only score. Opening play of the second quarter. It is second down and four. Hand off to the front man. That's Rodney Peters. Not much going this time. Peters, the ball carrier to about the 19. Now they're going to spot it at the 20. One of the things that two tight ends does for Mississippi State, Johnny Majors is trying to, I mean, excuse me, Rocky Felter is trying to get their little cornerbacks, Tennessee's little cornerbacks, involved in containment. And so what they do is they'll put a tight end, which will be nose-to-nose -nose with Mike Kelly, who's used to playing the open side end more often than not. And then either Terry McDaniels or Tony Nelson or Victor Peppers has to get involved in support. Third and two. Big play for the Bulldogs. They trail seven to nothing. Here's the option. William pulls it out. Oh, he waited forever and dives forward. It's going to be a first down penalty marker after the play here on the near sideline. He, he allowed the tackle to get in progress before Williams pulled that ball out of the belly of Rodney Peters. Personal foul, Tennessee. They'll tack it on to the end of the run. Well, Rodney Peters is leading the blocking here, and uh, let's see if we can see it. And again, Bob, you, you talked about it. Patience, patience. Let that defense suck in. Okay, Man. now, let go of it. David, let me take that ball, and runs upfield, and out of the picture to your right, Rodney Peters and Victor Peppers got into a little physical discussion. Now they're trying to decide just where this foul happened and whether it was a dead ball foul and just how far to penalize. Rom Gilbert's the man who has to have the discussion down there. By the way, Gordon Pettis, the supervisor of officials for the SEC, is in the press box today. Stopped in Birmingham to chat with him about all these rules. And, oh, there are so many. And they, they can get so complicated. He said sometimes they're even complicated to him. And the only one who really understands it at the time of a call 
is the official down on the field. They're working with us, speaking of the, uh, the rules. I know there's always controversy over calls. There it is, dead ball, personal foul. And they, the decision, discussion was about whether it was Tennessee or the Bulldogs. Rocky Felker says, hold on. Yeah, really, it's not hard to tell the difference between maroon and white now. What's the story? They're thinking Rodney Peters might have had something to do with it. Let's watch him. He's number 21, and he's the man who had the ball pulled out of his uh, gut there by the quarterback. I think they faked a fair. Now watch Peters. He's number 21 on the top of your screen, rolling around there. He's set for the pitch out. Williams takes it upfield, and now Peppers comes and gives Peters a shot. And I'm sure after that, Rodney must have gone and retali retaliated. How do you say that? <laughs> you said it right. First and 22 from the 32. David Fair. Back inside the 30 to the 28-yard line. In the backfield for the Bulldogs, 44 Fair and 21 Peters. And Fair has now four carries for 11 yards. Frank is slow getting up, Bob. Let's see what the problem is with Gary Frank. He looks like his left leg and or ankle. Remember, he weighs 300 pounds. When you say put your weight on your foot, young man, you're talking a lot of weight there. Let's hope he's okay. Frank is from Omro, Wisconsin considered going to the University of Wisconsin came to Mississippi State because the folks here at State said we would like to have you participate in football and track and field and of course he is one of the nation's finest shot footers. Let's see it again. See it. Ooh. Man that's it. The Tennessee player rolled up on his David Johnson looked like he rolled up on the back of his knee and in situations like that you only hope that Young man's cleats aren't in the ground, because if they are, then that's going to be a problem. Well, let's hope he's okay walking relatively easily, trying to jog a little bit going to the sideline. Heaven knows the Bulldogs need him on the offensive line. And there's his uh, second dad there, Tom Good. Tom Good played for the Dolphins, the original Dolphins, and he was just a... we got some good Tom Good stories we'll tell as the game goes on. Second down, 21 from the 28-yard line for the Bulldogs. That personal foul call against Rodney Peters has really hurt him. Peters, quick opener, closed more quickly. Let's have a look at some scores around the nation today. Georgia leading Oregon State 7 to nothing. Oregon State said their biggest worry in that game was the Georgia Heat. Vince Dooley said, I think you should worry about our team. <laughs> Clemson leading 3 0 in the first over Virginia Tech. Boston College with an early lead over Temple. We'll keep you posted on all the scores all day. Maryland, Virginia nodded at 7. Georgia Tech in their season opener at home against the Citadel, one double A school. Third and 20 from the 27 Bulldogs. Williams couldn't stay on his feet, got a yard or so. Working on the left leg of Gary Frank on the sideline, the strong side tackle for Mississippi State. That'll be a field goal opportunity here for the freshman, Joel Logan. They'll spot the ball at the 32. It's a 42-yard attempt. It is no good. Wide to the right side. The Bulldogs basically really hurt themselves with the dead ball personal foul against Rodney Peters. They had it down there deep in Tennessee territory and never could get it going again. You're watching SEC football on the Turner Broadcasting System. The campus of Mississippi State University in Starkville, 11.57 to go in the second quarter. University of Tennessee 7, Mississippi State nothing. The Bulldogs had possession of the football from the end of the first quarter into the second quarter here for 9 minutes 57 seconds. 17 plays and got nothing out of it. That's Reggie Cobb driving it up the middle near the 30. Let's go to our studios in Atlanta for this college football update. Ohio State at it again. Quarterback Tom Tupa looking for Everett Ross. West Virginia has turned the ball over four times. A great catch in the end zone. 17 to nothing. Ohio State, second quarter. Back to Bob Neal and Tim Ford. Trying to make him forget Chris Carter, I guess. Reggie Cobb 
driving near the first down. He was tackled by Jeremiah Sangster, the left inside linebacker. Cobb has 25 yards and five carries thus far today. Jeff Francis last year seventh in the nation in terms of passing efficiency really developed as a as a bright young quarterback and finished strong as the most valuable player in a pre, in a postseason bowl and hasn't been quite as sharp early in the year third down one Howard he's a truckload had 134 yards against Mississippi State last week Howard takes his 240 pounds across the line to gain and gets the first down the power runner good block in there by by Wilson pow knocks it through there and you're watching William Howard who led the SEC in scoring last year and had a great game last year against Mississippi State if they would have stayed with Howard last year against the Bulldogs I think Tennessee would have walked out of that game with a victory 184 yards last year three touchdowns Francis stumbles but has time going long looking for number four Cleveland broken up beautifully by 34 that's Milton Smith the little 5'9 cornerback Terrence Cleveland though is the little guy in that picture he's only 5'8 most defensive backs get in trouble at the end of a play because they don't do a good job locating the ball this is picture perfect he locates the receiver turns locates the ball and gets up high into the air watch him now he's got the receiver knows where the receiver is now he's trying to locate the pigskin sets Leaps into the air. That's a good little athlete, Milton, and he'll hit you. Second down, 10 from the 36. Good job picking up the blitz, but everybody was blitzing. No gain on the play. They'll mark it down, and Howard at the 45-yard line. First guy back there was Leonard Hooker. Second was Anthony Butts. Saw the Tennessee back shift to pick up that blitz, but there were too many coming. Here's Hooker, and it's something that Mississippi State's doing that's a little bit different. They're blitzing the inside linebacker. This wasn't an all-out blitz, just the inside linebacker, and he certainly disrupted the timing of the football play and created some confusion in Tennessee backfield. It was Nate Middlebrooks, the tight end, who was lined up in the backfield and tried to stop that blitz to no avail. Third down 11 now. Francis. Complete first down. 47-yard line of Mississippi State to Alvin Harper. 17-yard gain for Tennessee and a very big third down conversion. Let's see it again. Uh, no pressure on Francis here. Does a nice job of reading it. A basic three-deep zone. Looks for a split end. He bends it inside that linebacker and pow. Nice job. Linebackers in that situation, they need to get back to. They need to sink a little bit deeper. That Sangster needs to get wider on that play. Slot right formation for the Volunteers. They lead 7 0. They fake it to Cobb. Everybody bought it. Francis throws on the run. Incomplete. Short hopped it down there to 5. TD Woods at about the 35 yard line. Incomplete. The flag down. Might, might have a lineman downfield. Yeah. Nine minutes, seven seconds to go. Second quarter. Tennessee leads seven to nothing. An eligible receiver. An eligible receiver downfield. Offense. Don remains the first. Walt Harris, the offensive coordinator up here in the booth next to us, calling the plays. Uh, probably has got more balance than he's had in the last several years. Got the ability to run the football, a good, strong offensive line, a reliable quarterback, people that can fly. Tough offense to defense, Bob. Excuse me, Harper and McGuire are the receivers for Tennessee. Screen it to Cobb. Oh, that had trouble all over it, and he broke the tackle. Cobb, back to the 48-yard line. That ball just floated out there. There could be goal lines and headlines for one of these Bulldog players if that ball gets knocked loose. I would say that Tennessee is the best screen passing team there is in the country they do it better than anyone they get their linemen out front linemen make effective blocks look at that people on the ground excellent effort by Cobb there's Walt Harris right there as a defensive back at the unit well we'll talk about him in a minute second and ten from the 48 yard line Tennessee 
Nathan Middlebrooks, the tight end, lined up in the backfield. Four-man rush. Great protection. Incomplete right in and out of the hands of Alvin Harper. Oh, he was so open down at the 31-yard line. That's two dropped balls so far in this ballgame. Let's see if we can see uh, Walt Harris again. Walt spent uh, three years as a coach at the University of Pacific as a defensive back. That's what he played in college. Went to Mississippi, uh, Michigan State. Then he coached the quarterbacks at Illinois with Dave Wilson and Tony Eason. Coach Tony Robinson. Third down 10, big defensive play here for Mississippi State. It is complete this time to the 34-yard line. Tennessee first down, and Alvin Harper caught it. Looks like they went maybe to the same kind of play. 14-yard gain. Tennessee keeps the drive alive. They lead 7-0, eight minutes to go in the first half. And that should bring a smile to uh, Walt's face. This time again, a three-deep zone. Looks to the weak side of that zone, to the end, circling in. You see number 58, Darren Martin. Darren Martin, in those situations, you have to recognize how deep you got to get. You got to get back farther, Darren. First and 10, down to the 25. Penalty marker goes down is Charles Wilson. I believe I saw a penalty marker. Check that. Nine-yard gain, 7.31 to go in the second quarter. No penalty marker, Tennessee. We'll have second down short yardage. You know, the reason that the that patterns have backs in the flat, tight ends in the flat, is to suck up a linebacker, try to bait the linebacker to create room behind them. That's, what hap that's what's happening to Mississippi State's defense right now. First down, Tennessee. Charles Wilson with the carry. Tennessee started this drive at their 25-yard line after Mississippi State had had possession of the ball for nearly 10 minutes and 17 plays and then missed on a 42-yard field goal attempt and Tennessee took it over at the 25. Now Tennessee threatening on a first and 10 from the 21 of the Mississippi State Bulldogs. Cobb. Short of the first down, but did you see how quickly he got through the narrow hole over on the left side? And, and Nate Middlebrook did a beautiful job. Watch the tight end. The right of your screen. He's locked up on the linebacker from Mississippi State. Just come into your picture right now. Locked up on James Williams. That enables the play to turn the corner. McCullough tried to close it, but there was too big a gap there. Good job, Nate. Second down three from the 14. Tennessee leading 7 0. 6.20 to go in the first half. Volunteers inside the 15 yard line of the Bulldogs. Wilson and Cobb in the backfield for Tennessee. There's Francis with a check off. Cobb hit at the line of scrimmage. Oh, he's hard to bring down. They'll spot it right at the line, so it'll be third down three now. Big play for Tennessee here. Johnny Majors getting some communication with Walt Harris and deciding what will work on a third and three at the 14 of the Bulldogs. This situation last year, they tried to run a fade into the corner. T.D. Wood splits wide to the left side. Cleveland McGuire to the right side. Three wideouts in there for Tennessee. Here's Francis with the check. That's the second time he's knocked down the quick toss, and Tennessee's going to have to attempt a field goal here. Phil Rich will come in. James Williams is only 6'1". He's no 6'9 uh, basketball player over there. He's just a 6'1 linebacker. And he's playing for Cedric Kors, who was injured last week and who has been their most consistent player on defense. But Williams and Martin and Kors rotate in there. But but they, they won the bluff that time with Jeff Francis. They bluffed Jeff into thinking it was a blip. Bill Rich, the junior from Fort Lauderdale, Florida, gets it through the uprights. There is a penalty marker down. The call is going to go against Mississippi State. They may have bumped into the kicker or the holder. And Eddie Miles, Eddie Miles with a good rush on that kick, may have bumped into somebody. If that is the call. You want to take the field? Tennessee will have an opportunity now to take the field goal and the points or the penalty, which would give them a first down. That's the discussion that's going on down there. 
Jeff Francis talks to Rom Gilbert. That's Rom Gilbert, the referee. And talking to him now is William Howard Francis over on the sideline talking to the coach. And Tennessee is going to take the points off the board and take the call and the ball, hoping for a touchdown. A lot of people will debate whether you ever take any points off the board, Tim. Well, that's that's the uh, that's the old golden rule. You know, once yeah. you got them up there, leave them up there. <laughs> you know, Don't make you... a withdrawal once you've made the deposit. That's right. So, but uh, Johnny feels confident. I'm sure that uh, they can get into the end zone for seven. And... Running in a kicker, defense, five yard distance gives him a first down. See if it's 12 Eddie Miles. Randy right. Sanders holding. Good call. You know what I think. <laughs> you think he's barely bumped it? Like, go ahead and let that kicker get 30. He isn't going to hurt him. Well, it wasn't a roughing the kicker. No, and he left running it. into, but it is right. a first down call, and they spot the ball at the nine. First and goal, Tennessee. They lead 7 0. 5 17 to go in the first half. Nothing happening on the first down. Carry by Reggie Cobb. Stopped at the line of scrimmage. And this is when you find out about your defense. You create the character of a defense in, in a difficult situations. Just like last year, Tennessee had all those starters coming back. They had been exceptional the year before. But the, the injuries, of course, affected their output. That the chemistry just didn't happen. The plays, like Terry McDaniel made early in the game, weren't just happening for them last year. Second down. And goal from the 10. And Tennessee had a player encroach Nate Middlebrooks. He jumped all the way across the line, made contact, and if it's accepted, that'll move him back five yards. And I know they don't like it, but, but Tim, what about, as you look at this again, what about the possibility of this actually giving Tennessee a little bit more room to operate down there? Well, I'm, not, I'm, I'm sure that this wasn't uh, intentional, and I think they've got all the room they need to operate. <laughs> they've got, uh, you know, five, nine Milton Smith out there, and you know, pretty soon you're going to see Harper go that way. Second down, 15 from the 15. Second and goal from the 15, actually. Francis sees that movement. Checking it off. Reggie Cobb hit in the backfield and down at the 15. Oh, it's Johnny Major saying, should I have made a withdrawal after the deposit of three points? We'll know after this third down. I guess Johnny, who does have a lot of faith in his kicker, Phil Rich, figures if they don't turn it over, the worst that can happen is Phil Rich will have an opportunity to kick it again. I guess that's one way to look at it. Exactly. But, uh, Johnny was also on the sideline in New York and watched what his defense did to Iowa. They got the ball on the one-yard line. <laughs> turned out to be a 14-point spread. Riverboat gambler, Johnny Majors. Third down, goal from the 15. All kinds of signals down there. And Francis said, time out. Penalty markers down. We'll be back to explain it in a moment. You're watching SEC football on the Turner Broadcasting System. Well, here's a story of what happened. Tennessee had signaled for a timeout, decided they did not want the timeout. But in the meantime, in the confusion, the 25-second clock had ran down to zero. The penalty marker was for delay of game. So Tennessee gets penalized back outside the 20, where it is now third down and goal from the 20. This is the 17th play of the Tennessee drive. The Bulldogs earlier in the late first and early second had a 17-play drive that got them nothing. Tennessee had a field goal, took it off the board after a penalty of running into the kicker, and now it's third and goal from the 20. Tennessee does not convert. Middlebrooks, the intended receiver. The defender was 33 Bernard McCullough, and Phil Rich comes in now for a longer field goal attempt. McCullough could uh, be in the secondary for Tennessee. They've got all those track men, and McCullough anchors the 400-meter relay here at Mississippi State. Of course, Jeff thinks there's pass interference. It'll be a 37-yard field goal attempt by Phil Rich. They took three off the board earlier. Can he put them back in the bank? Now that's confidence. Johnny Major said, we'll try to get the touchdown. If we don't, Phil will kick it through again for us, won't you, young man? He said, yes, sir. Tennessee leads 10-0 with 3-10 to go in the first half. Rich field goal, and there you see illegal contraband. The SEC banned those belts from this place, and that lady, tell her goodbye. She'll be out of here. Goodbye. 
<laughs> well, it's not quite that strict. You hear the cowbells. They were very noisy down there. They can really affect it. Back in 75, the cowbells were so loud that the, the Mississippi State people say, shoot Jordan, the late shoot Jordan at Auburn, went to the conference meetings in the spring after 75 for the 74 season and said, hey, those cowbells are unfair. So the conference banned them on only conference games. So they bring them out when they play somebody like Southwestern Louisiana. Otherwise, it's uh, you got to sneak those things in here. the kickoff Tennessee leading 10 nothing penalty marker is down at the kickoff Moore at the center. Moore to the 42 yard line he was tripped up by Chris Treese but John Moore took it all the way to the 47 it was a 52 make it the 42 a 52 yard return Moore's the junior from Philadelphia Mississippi it looked as though the penalty marker would be against Tennessee for being offside. It was thrown at the Tennessee kickoff line. Well, this te team is playing with a new attitude and new inspiration, it looks like to me. Wait a minute. You see what Tennessee was signaling? Maybe it's the Bulldogs. Ron Gilbert will tell us. Outside. See any cowbells in that picture? No, sir. Those are law-abiding students there. Well, they call it against Mississippi State, so that nullifies a tremendous kickoff return by John Moore. The only time I used to see a, the receiving team offsides on a kickoff, Bob, is like when you'd play the Bears back in the old days and Dick Butkus used to be on the kickoff return team and they'd send them after the foreign guy. You know, they'd, <laughs> they'd send them after the kicker and then Butkus would just chase them down. You know, as soon as the guy would kick it off, he'd start running the other way. <laughs> Butkus is hot on his trail, you know. There's the scoring drive. Tennessee took 17 plays, 55 yards, and two opportunities for the field goal. They kicked one, and Bulldogs ran into the kicker. Tennessee got the ball again, tried to score, but had all kinds of problems and marched backwards instead of forwards, and then went ahead and got the field goal. And there's John Moore still breathing hard after his 52-yard kickoff return. Now Tennessee moves it up five yards to the 40. Morganoni should put it in the end zone here. He's got a strong leg and does. So, how big a play was that? Well, it cost about at least 60 yards from where it was to make it 40 yards from where it'll be placed now at the 20 on the touchback. And Mississippi State trailing by a score of 10 to nothing. We'll have three minutes left in this half. Be sure and join us next week when TBS Sports presents SEC football from Birmingham, Alabama. We'll be at Legion Field. The Florida Gators will take on Bill Curry's Crimson Tide. Crimson Tide playing at Penn State tonight. Florida Gators at home against Tulsa. That'll be 12.30 Eastern Time. College football grandstand beginning at 12.15, 11.15 Central. Join us next Saturday. Albert Williams on the option. Toss the fair. Needs a block. Didn't get it. Goes down at the 25. Tennessee's defense. The pursuit is so excellent for these volunteers. It was pretty well blocked by Mississippi State. It was an excellent play. Instead of the option on the down lineman that was the option on the linebacker and uh, the contained man also had to take the pitch and if fair could have turned it up and got some fire behind him early he might have gone a long way there at five on it 230 to go first half Tennessee leads 10 up second down five from the 25 and off to the front man in the backfield that's Marcus Bush number 22 not much. Had an opportunity to talk to uh, Tennessee's defensive coordinator and longtime legend in terms of defense, Ken Donahue, and uh, discussing last year, talking about uh, this young quarterback, Albert Williams. And one of the things he says is, gee, uh, you know, I don't know if he can throw, but I kind of hope he can't throw as well as Don Smith <laughs> in, uh, in talking about the way they pressured him last year on defense. Penalty markers down. The ball carrier is down at the line of scrimmage. Cooper with the tackle. That was David Fair who had the ball. Three penalty markers. Down. So whenever you, whenever you blitz an offense, 
you're applying pressure and you're trying to create confusion and you're trying to take advantage of certain situations you're trying to create an unblocked man but you're also giving up defense in depth and so what you can do is get hit big and for example the largest pass completions against Tennessee this year have been on the blitz so Tommy Parks the sophomore from Houston, Mississippi, comes into punt. He had only a 29-yarder last time. Number one, Andre Kramer, will be seen. Almost blocked. Got a real beauty. Penalty markers down at the line of scrimmage. Kramer takes it at his 21. Out to the 27. Good punt coverage by the Bulldogs. That was Tony Burke's first man down, but there's a penalty marker back at the line of scrimmage. There have been a host of penalties. There have been 11 accepted in this game. Several declined. About 15 penalties have been called here in the first half. Personal foul against Tennessee. It was a 52-yard punt. Now, this is uh, something officials have been watching. I think that there was a penalty against the Tennessee defender hitting the punt snapper they're really trying to protect the man who's snapping for the punt this year because he's in such a vulnerable position grabbing his face mask there definitely a vulnerable position and you get assaulted when you snap on punts and i'm not sure how they protect you they move it out to the 41 new life for the bulldogs first down 10 williams down the side. Oh, my. Jeff Patton was really vulnerable. As the pass was thrown high, he had to go up and really paid for it. Terry McDaniel got him in the uh, solar plexus. And this is not how to win friends and influence people. If it's good effort by Patton, the ball overthrown, and Tennessee displaying a tenacity, and I mean, trying to defend against those particular patterns, but uh, Mississippi State is really showing spirit and a competitive edge that, they, that we didn't see late in the year. Second down, 10 Bulldogs. It is complete to the 40-yard line to number 83, Darrell Kennebrew. First down, Bulldogs, 109 to go in the half. Mississippi State with two timeouts remaining in case they need them. Good protection here. Number 50, Tommy Good, 76, Derwood Miner. And he just drills it down in there between the linebackers. On the first down, Peters to the 31-yard line. Number 21, Rodney Peters, clocked down to 53 and counting. And Kelly Ziegler just got a shoelace on him, or Peters is heading for Pater. Clock to 43 and counting. Mississippi State does have two timeouts remaining. Hank Phillips. He gets out of bounds to stop the clock with 29 seconds remaining in the half. Near the first down marker. One of the things that you have to be considering if you're calling plays for the Bulldogs is the blitz. You're always thinking about the blitz. You're thinking about protecting the blitz, and you're thinking about what do we have that works on the ground or in the air that could pop it. And in this area of the field, if a good run can score just as easily as a pass because you've got to be anticipating a blitz, especially against Tennessee. Although we've seen a different style of defense from Donahue this, after this afternoon in the sense that uh, there haven't been nearly as many blitzes as there, as there were last year. And I think that that's a pattern that's beginning to develop now. We saw the same thing against Iowa. Just about an inch to go for the first down here at the 28-yard line for the Bulldogs. Williams is going to keep it and get the first down. Clock ticks, and they'll probably try to call a very fast timeout here. Well, they won't need it because of the first down. That'll stop the clock at 25 seconds. And the Bulldog coach is trying to figure out what's going on. Checking it out. I can't, uh, can't really see who that is. You know, I know Ronnie Gray is up there, and Talleron Steve Logan is up there. Yeah, with the towel around his neck, maybe it's uh, John Thompson, the Georgetown basketball coach. <laughs> I know where's the towel. You're watching SEC football on the Turner Broadcasting System. 
Here's the situation. 25 seconds left in the half. Tennessee leads 10-0. First and 10 Bulldogs from the 26-yard line. I think you got to try to get somebody into the end zone and then run somebody across, run a crossing pattern. You get a good chance of getting open across the field against a blitz. Tennessee with four-man rush. Almost picked off down at the 12-yard line. Intended for Hadley. Ziegler with the hit. We're going to get to see Fred Hadley working here. It's a three-deep zone, four short zones. They're trying to get it in behind Ziegler. Look at Ziegler. Look at that patience. He doesn't bite on that short man. Drops to the curl. Almost makes the interception. Hadley had a chance to make that catch as the ball slid through Ziegler's hands. Ziegler tried to tip the ball. Kramer with the stop on second down 10. 17 seconds to go in the half. Tried to get it to 83, Kenny Brew. He was well covered. Clock down to 13. Very uncharacteristic from Donahue, and I'm sure that's what uh, has Rocky Felker's brow wrinkled. A three-deep zone in this area is, is not what you're used to seeing from Tennessee. You're used to see him play him half field, or they're going to come and get you with pressure. Well, that's what Rocky said, though. He said the difficulty against Ken Donahue is as soon as you think you'll lose something, he does something else. And that's yep. exactly what's happening today. It's third and 10 from the 26. 13 seconds to go in the half. State trailing by 10. Kenny Brew lined up on the wrong side. They switch him all the way over. On the third down. Again, Tennessee cover. It's picked off. It was overthrown. Man with the ball, Kelly Ziegler. Ziegler out to the 28-yard line. The clock is down to three seconds remaining in the half. Now, Albert Williams just did not make a good pass that time. Right into the waiting arms of Ziegler. We'll be right back. Well, this has been the story of the Tennessee defense. This has been the story of the Ten Tennessee defense this year. Coming up with the big play under pressure. When they're backed up, somebody steps up to the plate and takes a swing. And here it is, their leader, Kelly Ziegler. And they'll just run the clock out. That's the end of the first half. Tennessee leading by a score of 10 to nothing. Stay with us. We'll have all our halftime activities. We'll be giving you scores from all the college games around the nation. Tennessee will receive to begin this half of SEC football 1987. Tennessee leading by a score of 10 to nothing. They won the coin toss and delayed their option till the second half, so Tennessee will be receiving. Scott Field, Starkville, Mississippi. It's about 85 degrees. The deep back for Tennessee is number 34, Reggie Cobb, back to take the kickoff for the University of Tennessee Volunteers. Crowd of about 35,000 here at Starkville. The stadium seats 41,000. Very unusual to have a daytime game here. Actually started in the morning, uh, central time. Bulldogs the last several years have been playing most of their games at night. But an enthusiastic crowd at Mississippi State University. Starkville, by the way, a real growing research and development community. A lot of major research and development firms moving into this area. So it's a very fast-growing area, the Golden Triangle of, I guess you'd call it Western Central Mississippi. Now time for the Alka-Seltzer statistics at halftime, and let's take a look at the, the story of this ball game. The, mostly it's been flag football. We've seen so many penalty markers, more markers than those accepted, 11, about 15 penalties have been called. And as you see, Mississippi State with more total yards and more time of possession, no points. Tennessee has been conservative in defense in terms of their calls. Of course, they're playing aggressive defense, but they're not going after them with the blitz. They're trying to eliminate the big play. They got hurt very badly last year on the big play, and they're going to make Mississippi State drive the ball down the field, which they have done twice very effectively. There's the kickoff. Coming down to Reggie Cobb at his six-yard line. The freshman. Out to the 27, and down he goes. He was tripped up by number five, Tony Burks. A return of 21 yards. And Jeff Francis comes back out here to lead the Volunteers. Francis, 7 of 13 for 109 yards and one touchdown. And Francis, we talked about Tennessee having some question marks about him, Tim. He played well in the first half. He played well, but you know he's got a problem, and it's it's like uh, Bob Greasy with the Dolphins. If uh, if he ever went 50 percent throwing the ball, people started booing. They they expect more than that. He had such an exceptional year last year. 
There's that outside screen to number five, Thomas Wood. Tennessee loves to open up with that. They get about nine or ten on it this time. Normally, the man receiving that would be Anthony Miller, the speedster senior from California who has a torn posterior cruciate ligament in his right knee. How close was it's that? It's the one right here. You feel this right here? Oh, yes. <laughs> that was great. A war injury. Anthony Miller is out, they think, about six weeks indefinitely. He had arthroscopic surgery. He is a great player. Here's Cobb, speaking of great players. They expect a lot from him. They never did get him down on that. He got the first down on the run, out of bounds at the 40-yard line. So Tennessee has these big linemen in uh, Galbraith and Kirk and uh, Simons is 270 still, who's filling in for Phil Stewart. He's 270, but they're awfully mobile, and they really get out there on that quick screen to the flanker and, and set up a, a, almost a wedge. It looks like a kickoff return, and if the defensive back doesn't get into it in a hurry, you got a big problem. Opening moment, second half from Starkville, Mississippi. Tennessee leading 10-0. Francis with the play fake all day to throw on the run. Wide open, number four, Terrence Cleveland to the 26-yard line. They got everybody moving left, and Francis rolled right and hit Terrence Cleveland. He was tackled by 46 Russell and 34 Milton Smith. Little play action fake. They run Milton Smith out deep. Terrence Cleveland ran to the flat and then turned up the sideline and fell in that open area. Smith, seeing the ball thrown, re reacted back to it. But actually, Michael, Michael Taylor should be getting more depth. He should be turning and running with that second man through his zone. He lets him go and created an open man. 34-yard pass completion. William Howard gets a few off the left side. The pullback down to about the 22-yard line goes William Howard. Tennessee's rushing yardage in the first half, only 51 yards. Tennessee pass for 109. Mississippi State moved the ball up and down, but thanks to mistakes and probably inexperience would be my main guess. Mississippi State unable to score. It is second down six. Reggie Cobb. Oh, he's a great runner. Touchdown, Tennessee. Three-yard touchdown run by Reggie Cobb. He caught a touchdown pass of 39 yards in the first quarter, and now he runs it in. The good eye running back is always looking for the cutback. Get everybody going this way, now create a seam. Todd Kirk did that, led through by the fullback. That's, uh, Kevin Simons gets a good block, and Cobb takes it all away. Point after is good, and Tennessee leads 17 to nothing with 13-16 remaining in the third quarter from Starkville, Mississippi. Tennessee leading 17 to nothing on the Reggie Cobb 23-yard touchdown run. We'll show that to you again in a minute. Some great blocking and a beautiful cut by Cobb. More from the 11 for the Bulldogs. John Moore, an exciting kickoff returner out to the 35-yard line. Let's see that run again by Reggie Cobb. And this is the way a running back likes to see it develop. There's All-American Harry Galbraith there. Nate Middlebrook, number three. See him locked on James Williams. He creates that hole. Now, Cobb's looking back to the inside. Roland Poles leads him back, always looking against the grain. Look back to your right. You see, going to see Bo Russell come up here and miss right there, and that's what did it. Broke it clean. Good job of running and blocking by Tennessee. First and ten, State from the 35-yard line. Slot right formation. Albert Williams is just going to keep it. Oh, hello. Albert Williams down to the 33-yard line. Reggie Cobb, number 34. Remember the freshman who had such a great debut from Georgia in 1980. Reggie Cobb was in the stands at Neyland Stadium in Tennessee, a high school player at the time. That next season, he asked to wear number 34. That he always wanted to go to UT in his hometown. And now he's off to a beautiful start, an exciting start for the freshman, Richard freshman, tailback Reggie Cobb. Two touchdowns today, second down 11, Bulldogs. Flags are down. Look like some movement on the left side of the line. They've got some problems with the left side tackle position. They actually call it the quick tackle position. Dead ball fall. 
Ball start. Offense. Kevin Englehart is playing over there, number 73. But Tony Robertson, a freshman, plays quite a bit over there also. See if yeah, that's well, what it is. Yeah, watch the left tackle. Tried to beat the count a little bit early. They get concerned about getting back off the ball. Of course, Rocky knows those are the things that you have to eliminate if you're going to build consistent drives like they had in the second quarter. Eight penalties against the Bulldogs thus far today. Second down, 16 now. Going to see with a four-man rush. Phillips to the 30 and down. Hit by number six, Tony Nelson, the junior free safety. Phillips had a 61-yard run in the first half. He was hit at the 15-yard line. Looked like he was headed for a touchdown. Fumbled the ball, and it's been Tennessee since then. They lead 17 to nothing. Johnny Majors, what a great coaching job he did last year. Tennessee off to a horrible start. 1986, he came back and... Won the last five ball games, including a victory in the Liberty Bowl. They're going for victory number eight in a row today are the Volunteers. Third and 15. Albert Williams has time. Wants to go long. Has a man. Hadley. Complete. And out of bounds at the 43-yard line of Tennessee. Hadley's second catch of the day. This one for 27 yards. Little Z out pattern. You got Terry McDaniel chasing underneath, expecting deep help. But Hadley beats him to the outside. He should never really get outside position on Terry there, but uh, just a beautiful throw. Most quarterbacks have to put more air under that ball, given those speedy Tennessee defensive backs time to react. But that ball was thrown on the line. Williams, 5 out of 11 for 69 yards. One interception in this game. Phillips driving inside the 40 to about the 38-yard line. Phillips was named the most valuable player for the Mississippi State Bulldogs in last week's victory over Southwestern Louisiana, even though the star quote of the game was Albert Williams, Rocky Felker and the coaches felt that Hank Phillips, number 29, gives them the leadership that they need at that tailback position, even though he's hearing the footsteps of David Fair back there at tailback. Second and six from the 39. Bulldogs trailing 17 to nothing. Number 21 is Rodney Peters. Gets about two near the 35-yard line. Some pretty good running backs for the Mississippi State Bulldogs. If they avoid some injury offensively, they could get quite good by the end of the year. And for Mississippi State, they better. They have that November nightmare of a schedule when they get to the last four or five games. And these running backs are going to be maturing along the way. Injuries, of course, play an important factor, but they're going to get better every game. Third and two. Close to the first down. I'm not sure they got it. Ball carrier Hank Phillips. Phillips the ball Tom Good is over on the sideline there with the headsets on and uh, a familiar sight. The Mississippi State people went to school here and. Uh, played with the Dolphins as I mentioned and I got down there in 1970 he was injured had three operations and he figured he probably wouldn't play again but the Dolphins made the playoffs and they tried to bring him back through injured waivers and uh, he couldn't clear ended up Baltimore picked him up and he snapped he was a snapper on a field goal that Jim O'Brien kicked as the Colts beat the Dallas Cowboys in that game and Tom loves the coach and he does a great job with his offensive line here. Yeah, they're going for it, Tim. Fourth down, inches. Power eye. Albert Williams dives off right guard behind Good and Sims. And I think he got it. Mississippi State trailing 17 to nothing with 9.45 to go in the third quarter. Needed it, got it. The drive stays alive. Johnny Majors, part of a very talented coaching staff at Mississippi State back in the early 60s. Paul Davis was the head coach. Johnny Majors actually came here in 60, where he was B-team coach, and then moved to the secondary. Bill Dooley, who's at Wake Forest now, and Ken Donahue, the defense coordinator for Tennessee, also coached here. Only a yard or two 
David Fair carrying Keith along with the tackle. As we were talking to Johnny Majors, Tim, I got a kick out of him saying he had one of the, we said, why'd you leave Tennessee, where he was the freshman coach there after his great career playing in Tennessee? He says, well, I got a raise. I made 4000 at Tennessee, 4500 here at Mississippi State. I'd been married a year. And I needed the extra 500 And it's interesting, too, he played his first collegiate game against Mississippi State. Wanted to be redshirted because they had an all-conference running back it ended up running for 80 yards in his first game. Uh, ripped off an 80-yarder, made an interception. Things to come. Second down eight, Williams. It was tipped at the line. Falls incomplete. Good penetration by Tennessee's defense coming right up the middle. I thought there was going to be more problems for Tennessee's front line. You know, Brian Hunt's out, Mark Lubanik's out. And I thought that Hobby and Whitehead and McCray and Cooper and Johnson and those fellows would have a lot more problems and that... Mississippi State could run the ball better than uh, Mississippi State has today. Tennessee's front lines play pretty well. Yeah, well, Mississippi State has been able to maintain possession of the ball for an extended periods of time, and I think that's the reason. And remember that the front line held up pretty good against Iowa, which is a good football team. Bush and Orlando Wade, a true freshman in the backfield. He's number 31, Williams. A lot of time. Tucks it. Out of bounds at the 22. It's really close to the first down. DeLong with a stop. Let's see where they spot it. It's on the far side of the field from the marker, so Williams had to guess at the first down. He got it. A heads-up play by the freshman. Once again, good protection by the Bulldog line. Look at those guys set. Pop. Miner working on the top there. Engelbrecht, good job by him. All day, and, and he is expecting a two-deep zone or a blitz. He gets a three-deep zone again and scrambles out of there. Good athletic ability displayed there by Albert Williams. He has double tight ends in there now. First down 10, just out inside the 22-yard line of the Volunteers. Fake on the pitch. Williams goes down hard, gain of one. He was hit by DeLong, 33, and Miller, 45. Now, this has happened all day. Mississippi State, as you pointed out, Tim's been moving the ball up and down the field. They get down around the 30, 20-yard line, and Tennessee's defense is throwing them all kinds of funny looks. They can't get anything done. What about the Bulldogs here? Well, I think what they've got to expect is what they've been seeing now. I think that uh, you make adjustments at halftime, and, and Tennessee's got no reason to change what they've been doing. It's second down nine. Williams gives to Marcus Bush. Gets a couple and is leveled. The Tennessee player is down on the field at about the 21-yard line. It's Darren Miller. Tennessee trainer is going to go out and check on Miller. Tennessee's just been haunted by injuries. Hunt and Hovannik and Keith Davis and Miller and so many. We'll check on this one when we come back. You're watching SEC Football of the Turner Broadcasting System. Number 45 is Darren Miller, the senior from New Jersey, who had the 96-yard interception of the fumble, the pitch in that Iowa kickoff classic. Looked like he had injured his left leg, and they'll check him out. We'll report back to you. Lars Tate has three touchdowns as Georgia leads Big of Oregon State at halftime. Ohio State with no problem for West Virginia. And Clemson leading Virginia Tech in a tough ball game, 9-3. Pittsburgh over North Carolina State, second period. It is third down six at the 17. Bulldogs. 22 is Marcus Bush. He does not get the first down. Some more scores. Maryland, Virginia in a close one in the third quarter. In College Park. Oklahoma State leading Houston easily in the second quarter. And Syracuse and Rutgers. 10-0 at halftime. Georgia Tech having no problem playing a 1-AA team, the Citadel, 24-6. Harvey Schiller, the Southeastern Conference Commissioner, is with us today, and he's kind of watching that score as he's a Citadel grad. Georgia, Georgia Tech's got an excellent coach there. They lost a good one in Bill Curry, but uh, Bobby Ross is one of the finest men in college football. He'll do a good job there. Mississippi State finally gets on the board. A 31-yard field goal off the foot of true freshman Joel Logan from Hamilton, Alabama. Felker recruited him out of high school, gave him a scholarship. Rare for a kicker, and Mississippi State has scratched. Well, there's Gary Frank. You're looking at some bad news there. According, and he's smiling through the pain. According to the sideline manager for Mississippi State University, Gary Frank has a broken bone in his left foot, his lower left leg. 
Gary Frank injured in the first. He's a pro prospect, NCAA champion in the shot put, 300-pounder, counted on to play a big role in the Mississippi State offensive line. Right prior to our timeout, they had helped Darren Miller of the University of Tennessee, their great outside linebacker, off the field, and will report on his injury. We do not know the status of the Miller injury yet. He had a leg injury also. Mississippi State's on the scoreboard, however, and trails 17 to 3. It is Reggie Cobb. What a runner. Oh, he's exciting. You can see that he's just a half a step from breaking it almost all the time. Tripped up by Wayne Banks. So here's how the scoring's gone in the ball game. In the first quarter, Tennessee, after an 85-yard drive, got a 39-yard touchdown pass to Reggie Cobb. In the second quarter, Tennessee put a field goal up on the board, got a penalty after running into the kicker, went back and took the field goal again when they couldn't score a touchdown. Then Reggie Cobb again, 23-yard TD run in the third quarter, and the field goal for Mississippi State, and that's the scoring in this ball game. 6.42 to go, third quarter. Francis. It's complete to the tight end, Middle Brooks, for the 46-yard line. Tackled by 28, Michael Taylor. You can see this is here's the look that Jeff Francis has now on the left side Bo Bo Russell is a safety that had kind of tucked up faked the blitz and did not get enough depth as you see Middlebrooks coming all the way across the field and catching the ball in his area but this is only Bo Russell's second game of course he's going to gain more experience and, and you learn painfully like that because they'll run that one back a couple of times in the film room 23 yard first down pass completion from the 46. Francis is going to throw again some pressure screen. It's incomplete. Tried to throw it to Reggie Cobb. Not a not a great pass. A little tough to handle. Cobb should have caught it. He did not catch the ball much in high school. Backs as great as he is in high school. The only time they catch it is when they pitch it to him. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I tell you what, man. The road was clear on that one. There was three blockers out in front of him and he was gone. Jeff just uh, just didn't get it to him threw a nice pass, had a nice pass, uh, 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 excuse me, touching the ball to Middlebrook. And he's throwing the ball well. Three wideouts in there for Tennessee on second down 10 at the 46 of the Bulldogs. Volunteers lead, 17-3. Francis sees the blitz look, checks off, and calls timeout with one second remaining on the delay of game clock. He knew that he was facing some problems here. We'll be right back. 6.09 to go here in the third quarter. Tennessee leads 17-3. to You're watching SEC football on the Turner Broadcasting System. Second down 10. Tennessee from the 46 of the Mississippi State Bulldogs. Two receivers left. One to the right side. Single setback. Francis faces a four-man rush. Through Incomplete, looking for Alvin Harper. The corner of the end zone covered by a little Milton Smith. About eight, nine inches difference in height there, but Francis just couldn't connect. It'll bring up third down, 10. Yeah, there you see a couple of Tennessee coaches. Uh, there's Doug Matthews. He's the vocal one right there. He led the SEC in rushing back in 1969, a Vanderbilt graduate. Kippy Brown, uh, quarterback from Memphis. He's got the other headsets on, and he's the guy that's working with these wide receivers here at Tennessee, and he's the one that's been developing all those great ones. Big defensive series here for the Bulldogs. Third down, 10, Tennessee. Here comes a blitz. Quick dump over the middle. It's incomplete. Tried to pop it out there to tight end John Rollins quickly when Francis saw the blitz coming. Bulldogs toughened up here after Tennessee penetrated Bulldog territory and the defensive secondary for the Bulldogs were ready. Just give them a three deep look. They're playing man to man underneath. It's blitz. Bo Russell sits there and knocks it down. I think that's the best way to handle a blitz offensively. Instead of, you know, you, there are some plays that you have to get out of, but then there are some plays that can be automatics, that you go to automatically. Eddie Miles at the 14. And the little freshman gets it to the 20-yard line. And there, the Bulldogs trailing 17-3. to We'll put it on offense again. 
Mississippi State had a good recruiting class this year, according to Rocky Felker. Eddie Miles, one of these, although Eddie was actually a walk-on, and they really like him. Orlando Wade's a running back who's actually played in this game. And an actual scholarship went to Joel Logan. The guy he likes best is Reggie Stewart, a young linebacker. And he had uh, he played last week at uh, seven tackles in the game and three on special teams. So he was the leading tackler here last week. First and ten from the 20. Bulldogs trailing 17 to 3. Here comes David Fair. He finds a seam. And runs hard about seven or eight yards. We've been talking about the freshman for Tennessee, Reggie Cobb. David Fair hasn't had a chance to do much yet. That's his eighth carry. Has only 27 yards. But believe me, he can tag on a lot in a hurry. Tennessee, good recruiting class, too. And Johnny Major said, I don't really like talking about pure freshmen a lot because they have to perform before I say they're great. But he does like these guys. Patrick Lenore, Andy Kelly, Casey Rogers, and Von Reeves. Von Reeves is a tight end, a pure freshman, who played some for Tennessee already this year. Second and short, Bulldogs. Rodney Peters, first down, Bulldogs. And this is the type of offense that I think you're going to see from Mississippi State throughout the year. They need to have a ball control offense because their defense is going to be outmanned when they're playing some of these SEC teams. Not in terms of heart and desire, but in terms of size and ability and depth. And the best, I tell you what, we used to love it in the old days with the Dolphins. Greasy put together these 10 minute drives and we just sit there and drink Gatorade. First down, Mississippi State. David Fair gets nothing as he tests the left side of the Tennessee defensive line. David Johnson made the stop. 4.33 to go, third quarter. Tennessee leading 17 to 3. Our spotter today, Kim Anderson, stats by Alex Vergara, and our booth manager is Rose Smith, who's doing a very good job, but chewing her fingers down to the knuckles. She's tense in the game. Second down, nine. Shovel pass to Rodney Peters. Got a couple, not much. This Tennessee defense seemingly playing better and better as the game goes along, along with the tackle. Interesting looking play, trying to suck the contain to the outside and then run the option back inside. With number 52, Jason Little. Good blocking by Miner. Bango. Keith DeLong. Son of the former great Tennessee player from the mid-60s, Steve DeLong. Gives him a head for it. Steve was Outland Trophy winner. On the third down, Williams overthrows badly. We talked to Rocky Felker. He looked for Rodney Peters. We talked to Rocky Felker about the arm of... Albert Williams, it's questionable, and they've been working on fundamentals very hard with a young man, but as you can see, he's still struggling with the passing game. He seems to have a lot harder time with the short pass than the long ball, and Steve Logan's a quarterback coach here, was at Colorado for the last couple of years, so working with the running backs, and they changed his motion a little bit. They changed Williams' motion a little bit, and he's getting a lot better. Whoa! Almost blocked. Parks did get it away. Fair catch at the 34-yard line from Andre Kramer. The Volunteers will take over there with 3.19 to go. Third quarter, 28-yard punt. Parks just not getting the job done in terms of punting distance here for the Bulldogs today, and this field position really hurts them because they have, as Tim pointed out, been able to move the ball on Tennessee. They've come up with only three points in a little more than two and a half quarters. <laughs> Cleveland and Thomas Woods split wide to the left side for the Volunteers on the first down. Out of bounds at about the 36, Reggie Cobb. Well, we've got a veteran junior in Jeff Francis playing for Tennessee, who's thrown for a TD and 175 yards, and the freshman, 6 of 14, is Albert Williams with 73 yards. Williams didn't throw very much at all in his first game against Southwestern Louisiana. He didn't, and uh, you also have to compare styles of offense when you're making a comparison like that, because Mississippi State is type of team that throws it down the field. Tennessee will throw a lot of screens, dump the ball to their backs a lot, so you're going to have a higher percentage of completions there. Second down, six from the 36. Cobb. 
Short of the first down, he goes down at the 40. Reggie Cobbs had 13 carries today. We talked with him yesterday. I said, what, are you one of these backs who likes to carry it a lot? And, and that sounds funny, but a lot of them do. They say, I like, I need it 25 times. And he said, yes, sir, I'd like to have it 25 times a game. Uh, every great back that I've ever been around likes it that way because you're going to have, you're playing O.J. Simpson, you're going to have a lot of games with one yard, a half yard, loop two. But what you're playing for is the percentages, and he's got the ability to go 80, and you know he's going to do it eventually. Well, the Bulldog defense rise to the occasion again. Third and two, Tennessee. Cobb. Breaking tackles. Penetrates Bulldog territory. Reggie Cobb with his 14th carry of the day. He's up over 70 yards on the afternoon. McCullough with the stop. Toss to the wide side, just trying to lock up, look for the hole, find the opening. Bo Russell turns it back in. James Williams not able to make the stop as McCullough finally corrals him. Nasa Bennett. You see the numbers on Cobb, 5'11", 205. He's up to about 210 now. He's, he's not a, a massive big back. On the first down, Francis keeps it gets a yard or two and not much more that's certainly not what Tennessee had in mind four tackles on the day now for Darren Martin it's about 85 degrees here in Starkville actually what they were trying to do is bait the Bulldog secondary they were trying to get Milton Smith to bite inside they ran Terrence Cleveland down to the inside and broke him back drove him back to the outside we're still trying to get a report for you on the severity of the injury to the outside linebacker for Tennessee uh, Darren Miller went off with a leg injury. We don't know how serious yet. Penalty markers everywhere. Looked like uh, Simon's left tackle may have moved. That's a fresh move of the ball. Number 42, Roland Poles from Caledonia, New York. And Johnny Majors like, likes Poles a lot, too. We've been talking about Cobb. Yeah, especially, uh, I think it's a good Get combination. Ball. ball starts. Material alignment moves. Most, when you, O.J. Simpson... Jim Braxton was a, was a fullback, and he's got to be an unselfish guy. He's got to be a guy that's powerful, and that's that's a good blocker that can take on that strong linebacker, that defensive end, and and be the final thing that clears the way for that running back. Retaping the left ankle of Jesse Anderson, the tight end for Mississippi State. I, I'm not sure. If, I don't think he's injured. Check it down 13 from the 49. Francis, some pressure. They flush him out. Now it goes to the screen. It is complete, and it is to that man again. Reggie Cobb to the eight-yard line. Jeremiah Sangster with the stop. Oh, my, you're seeing a star in the making here today, folks. Reggie Cobb, the freshman from Knoxville. Watch these linemen get out in front of this play and go. Watch them now. That's a well-coached offensive line. Phil Fulmer, their offensive line coach. They work on this a lot. The ball is out there. And you see a lot of linemen run down a field and not hit anybody. They're clearing people out of the way and just... Uh, a lot of hustle and a lot of athletic ability displayed by those guys as they try to get their hat up on somebody downfield. There's Sankster. He didn't going to miss him that time. First and goal from the nine. No, no, no. Big William Howard, the fullback, carrying this time inside the five. They'll spot it at the three. Reggie Cobb had 87 yards receiving, as you saw a moment ago. He has 77 yards rushing. He's run for a touchdown, caught a pass for a touchdown, and he's also returned... Uh, two kicks for a total of 49 yards. So he's up over 200 yards in total offense today. It's the end of the third quarter. Tennessee threatening, leading by a score of 17 to 3. You're watching SEC football on the Turner Broadcasting System. Ready for the fourth and final quarter of play from Scott Field in Starkville, Mississippi. About 85 degrees, clear blue skies here in central Mississippi on the campus of Mississippi State University. The University of Tennessee leading by a score of 17 to 3. And it'll be second and goal from the four. This was set up by the Reggie Cobb run after the reception. It's Howard and Poles in the backfield now for Tennessee. Wilson also back there. He's in motion. Here's Cobb. Reggie Cobb. That's three touchdowns on the day for Reggie Cobb. Let's watch the blocking here as it develops. 
when you get when you get a toss like this in a goal line situation you have to get somebody upfield right now the longer they stretch it stretch it out the, the less your chances are of stopping the play Bo Russell tries to sneak through and make it but he just can't too strong good job of blocking by Tennessee one after attempt by Phil Rich is good barely and it's Tennessee 24 Mississippi State University 3 Tennessee's three touchdowns have been scored by Reggie Cobb with a big assist from Smokey the Blue Tick Hounds seat again from ground level There's Bo Russell moving with the man in motion Dwayne King number 49 steps up inside Barlow get, gets blocked here by Kevin Simon and uh, that's what creates the seam Cobb obviously looking for that green grass starts into the end zone Reggie Cobb with 217 yards and three touchdowns today two running one receiving there's Borgannone, who's got the strong kickoff leg for Tennessee, the freshman from Reno, Nevada, who does the kicking and is the, is the kickoff guy. He's, he's the kicker of the future here for Tennessee. John Moore is the man who touched it down. It'll come out to the 20-yard line, and Reggie's saying hi to the folks in Knoxville. It's always interesting to say, uh, see how a young freshman handles the kind of notoriety that's obviously going to come to him as a result of his performance so far. We've got three more years in college. There's a lot of carries left, right, Bob? A lot of carries before he joins the ranks of the great college backs, but he's certainly off to a great start. Tennessee leading 24 to 3. Here's the pitch to David Fair trying to make a name himself. And as a bay fumbles the ball. It ran right out of his hands, and he was trying to change arms with it, I think, out to the 43, loses it, Tennessee recovery. David Fair with an excellent run himself and was a step away from breaking it when it popped loose. And is this ever symbolic of this game? Hank Phillips ran it 61 yards in the opening moments of the game and fumbled it, and now David Fair, after breaking a beauty, loses the ball. Tennessee has it. You're watching SEC football on the Turner Broadcasting System. Fair is clear of the line of scrimmage. Here you see Killebrew working on uh, McDaniel. McDaniel gets back and reaches in there. Doesn't really affect him at all, but as he tries to switch the ball, the ball just falls out. Uh, quite unlike the Phillips fumble that was caused by the defense. And uh, the big thing there, I think, is just don't let that young man get down on himself. He's going to have a, he's got a lot of great runs left in him. Francis, under a lot of pressure, throwing on the run, incomplete. Back there in his face was redshirt freshman Reggie Stewart, one of those young men that Rocky Felker says he likes so much. Uh, excuse me, he's a pure freshman. He likes so much in this 1987 recruiting class. And he was right in the face of Francis, who had to just get rid of it. Penalty marker down, ineligible receiver downfield against Tennessee. I doubt that uh, Tennessee will be able to complete another one of those screens for a large gain. Uh, that time, Darren Martin was right in the middle of it. They're looking for it now, and it's just been a an effective tool all afternoon for him. Well, Tennessee going for eight wins in a row. The last time Tennessee's lost a football game was November 8, 1986. Of course, one of the other losses to Tennessee last year was up there at Neyland Stadium when Mississippi State came from behind and won the ball game. Charging up field. And the linemen do a good job setting it up, but Martin's right over in the middle of it. Eric Stills is downfield on Milton Smith. Second down, 10 from the 43. Tennessee quarterback Jeff Francis barking instructions checking off complete to Harper and out of bounds at the 43 yard line the red shirt freshman from Frost Proof Florida 6-5 great high jumper holds the Florida high school record for the high jump and Johnny Majors we talked to him a little bit yesterday and tried to get him to talk about Auburn he didn't want to talk about Auburn his mind was on Mississippi State but uh, yeah, on the plane home, I guarantee be thinking a lot about Auburn. A big game for both schools coming up in two weeks, and we'll be doing that game from Knoxville. Third down four from the 37. Francis completes it to number 10, Vincent Moore from Memphis. He's a redshirt freshman. Saw those stats on the Tennessee defense and how opportunistic they've been and how they have, have led to point totals for the University of Tennessee. There are now 10 turnovers caused 
by the University of Tennessee defense. Tennessee's only given it away two times, so that's a five to one ratio. And I think a point to make here is they've done that without uh, a lot of blitzing. They've just played smart, intelligent, get the ball kind of football, and given the opportunity, they're in there digging and grabbing and, and uh, reacting on the football when it's in the air. And you don't have to, to get a lot of turnovers. You don't have to blitz. You don't have to have that super pressure on the quarterback all the time. But you do have to work on it. Darren Miller, we had talked about Darren Miller being out earlier with a leg injury. He is back in there, so he's okay, and he has two fumble recoveries today. The other linebacker, Kelly Ziegler, has the interception, so those linebackers have been responsible. That reminds him, Dale Jones would be very proud of those young men. Dale, from a couple of years ago, is the big turnover guy for Tennessee. Fourth down, a yard. Tennessee's going for it with Howard. He gets the 240 pounds airborne and takes it over for the first down. Rocky distraught uh, could have could have had could have been a much different afternoon, Bob. Uh, the kickoff return that got called back, the Phillips fumble, could have been much different for him. Has to be pleased with the seven a 17 play drive against a very good Tennessee defense, though. 210 yards rushing, 73 yards passing for Mississippi State. They moved the ball. You know, about three that time. Bando Davis, the ball carrier. 21 to go in the ball game. We mentioned earlier, and we'll just remind you again, that Keith Davis, the junior starting tailback for Tennessee, is out with a knee. He's had a history of knee trouble, and Reggie Cobb has stepped in there, and it's going to be hard to get Reggie Cobb out of that backfield, but Vando Davis is not chop liver either. Tennessee's got a, a host of running backs, and Wilson and Howard and Poles at the fullback position. It's a good Tennessee team you're watching here today. Vando Davis inside the 25 to about the 24-yard line as the clock gets down to 12.50 remaining in the game in Tennessee at this point in clear control of this ball game. The Bulldogs have self-destructed. They have to feel good about the job that Albert Williams has done for them. He's done, he's done a nice job of, of running the football team, of being a field general. Only a couple of poor passes, both of them on short little dumps. Third down three from the 24 for the Volunteers. Lando Davis to the seven. It may be time to say that Reggie Cobb, yes, is a tremendously talented freshman, but you notice when the other tailback goes in there, he gets big yardage, and that's because of the big boys up front. And look at him get that. There's Galbraith. He's just walling off. Nobody there to block for him, really, and receivers hustling downfield to make contact old Milton Smith hangs on make them line up again that's your philosophy on defense make them run the play again because anything can happen they hand it to Poles the freshman extra effort just outside the goal line Roland Poles weighs ready for this 250 pounds you know, it's always amazing when you run into guys that size, Bob, how athletic they can be, how, how well-coordinated they are, what they quick feet, everybody dances good, you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're not sure about that. That's, that's just a guess. You know, they've got so much quickness. You know, it's, how big can they get and still stay quick? You see some of these fellas, it's amazing, especially when they're running over you. <laughs> Reminds me of the old Paul Brown backs. Cleveland Browns they used to have big 250 pound fast guards they said they give it to Poles again no problem this time from half a yard out touchdown Tennessee so Tennessee laying a whooping on the Bulldogs here today in Starkville 30 to 3 um, you can just hear the tractor winding up and there he goes boom you get too far Phil Ridge in for the point after touchdown. 11 minutes to go in this ball game. Tennessee's offensive line, we knew they were going to be strong in the middle with Kirk and Bruin and Galbraith. The tackles have played well, tight ends have blocked well, and as Tim pointed out on that last run by Vando Davis, the wide receivers out there taking care of business, blocking and getting this team to move. Tennessee leads 31-3. 
Well, the Flutie bloodlines continuing at Boston College. And the Eagles having no problem. Tennessee 31 to 3. Here comes John Moore. <laughs> Here he comes to the 22. And then, hello, that was 44, Mike Kelly, a freshman linebacker that Johnny Majors was talking about liking very much. And you can see why. He made a great play there on special teams. Tennessee only had to take it 43 yards, took them three and a half minutes for the touchdown on the 31 to 3 lead with 11 minutes to go in this ball game. David Fair out to the 26 yard line. David Fair has. 53 yards and 11 carries today. He's running the ball pretty well. And of course, he had the big fumble earlier. Georgia with a big lead over Oregon State. Lars, as our producer Skip Ellison said, Lars for the Heisman Tate has four touchdowns in that game. Georgia's great tailback. We'll be seeing Georgia on our telecast somewhere down the line. You can bet on that. You'll get a chance to see Lars Tate. Some great running backs in the SEC this year. On second down eight. Overthrown, penalty marker down in the backfield of the Mississippi State Bulldogs. Mike Whitehead came right up the middle on that. Kentucky with their season opener, 35 to nothing at half. Speaking of running backs, Mark Higgs has two touchdowns in that game. 130 yards rushing. So you picked the things best going up, Things going up in Lexington. They've got three good, Ivory Joe Hunter, Higgs, Logan, and, uh, Three really good uh, tailback, halfbacks at the University of Kentucky. So there, there are a lot of good backs all over the country. Emmett Smith, the freshman down at Florida. Uh, Alabama's Bobby Humphrey. Everybody thinks he's got the potential to be a Heisman candidate this year. I know I feel that way about it. But you look around the conference, and there are a lot of them. Every time we get to Starkville, you got to think about our, uh, our old buddy, uh, Jerry Clower. Knock him out, John. Clower. Clower played here. What is yeah. it, 1946? If I'm wrong, he'll write me a letter. He's he just like me, just there. like me, got overlooked for the height. <laughs> Second down 20 from the 12. Here is number 31, Orlando Wade. Into the backfield. Good penetration by Tennessee secondary that time. He would play it well. 10 08 to go in the ball game. Auburn, we don't have any running backs we talked about about Auburn because, you know, the Bo Jackson era, so to speak, may be over. And here's the thing you know about Auburn. Later in the year, one of them, one of the running backs will be a star because that's how good that football team is. Yeah, and, they, and we saw the University of Miami defense last week, and uh, Auburn's got to be one of the top defenses in the country also. Albert Williams. Connects to Wade, the freshman. Nice grab. Orlando Wade from Spring Hill, Tennessee. Playing on the wrong side of the state here. 23-yard reception for the true freshman, 18 years old. You have to throw this one on a line. He does. It's just great concentration, by the way. He knows he's going to get wrapped. In. Beautiful catch. Here we go, Orlando. They've got a lot of potential weapons here at uh, Mississippi State. First down 10 from the 36. Bulldogs trailing 31 to 3. This ball game is over in terms of the Bulldogs being able to win it, but they might be able to prove to themselves that they can come back here. They give it to Wade. Not much. Four Tennessee players there at the ball. Four of them. That was Wade, the ball. There's Kelly Ziegler. He's had seven tackles and interception today. He is the prototype Tennessee linebacker. We talked to him yesterday. Ask him about his heroes. Of course, there's uh, Dick Buckus. Uh, ever since I was a little kid, I've seen highlights on him, and he just did some incredible things uh, you know, while he was playing. And uh, being from Tennessee, now, uh, you know, uh, Hacksaw Reynolds, first a name like Hacksaw, you just gotta, you gotta like the guy for that. And, uh, you know, he did some great things while he was at Tennessee, so he's probably the best known one coming out of there. Williams, incomplete. He was looking for Heath Jackson the tight end as opposed to Keith Jackson, the great receiver at Oklahoma. There's Kelly Ziegler. I asked him what he was going to do. He said, well, maybe pro football, but I'll just let that see. He is a, a sports medicine physiologist, 
and says he's leaning toward that area. And Tim, your body will be coming sure, completely yeah. apart in another year or so, so you might. That's a good idea in the last couple of years if you play for Tennessee to be aware of what's going to come apart. Oh, Kelly so played for Jesse Davis uh, down in uh, at Palmetto High School, down in South Miami area. Great high school athlete. I think he was a Miami News uh, Football Player of the Year. Third down nine back. from the 37. Williams connects to Wade again. First down. Orlando Wade making himself heard out of the backfield late in the ball game. The 18-year-old freshman. 13-yard gain on that one. Albert Williams getting the ball a little bit more on the money now. And Albert Williams, there's no question from watching him practice and seeing him even in this game thus far, obviously has the skills to be a very good quarterback. We know he can run. But it's, it's looking to me as though they're going to have him throw the ball more than the great Don Smith did. I mean, I think that's more part of the thinking here. And I think he has the benefit of having a counter punch. Don Smith was it. I mean, once that was over, that was all. But uh, he's got some kids that can really run with him. Look, Look at that. Williams. Oh, nice job by Albert Williams. He did that right on cue, too. We appreciate that, Albert. You have a great sense of television about you. And Rocky's got a real creative offensive mind. He's just, and you know what? He's developing a sense of humor. I think last year he was really tight, you know, really concerned coming in here trying to turn things around. He had joked earlier about, uh, we had talked about the Tennessee speed on offense and defense, and he said, well, I thought about letting the grass grow, decided against it, but <laughs> the computer that runs the sprinkler on the field, I've been having trouble with that, so don't be surprised if that comes out at halftime. To the 36, number 22, Marcus Bush. 8-19 to go in this ball game. Johnny Majors has the game well in hand, 31-3. But Mississippi State really racking up the yardage. Just nothing but three points on the scoreboard, though. Thanks primarily to, uh, to fumbles, interceptions, and turnovers. And, and in that, I think, probably some other mistakes in regards to penalties. Because in the first half of this ball game, Mississippi State was penalized right out of a couple of drives. Second and seven from the 36 of Tennessee. Williams to Wade. It's knocked loose. They'll call it incomplete. Well, that was an Orlando Wade sandwich with mustard. Ooh, what a nice hit throw, that was. Nice throw. He really stuck it in the seam and hang on. Talk to, uh, you know, baseball is big here at Mississippi State, obviously, and uh, they just built uh, a big stadium out here. They call it Polk's Palace. Ron Polk is a baseball coach here. And uh, I got some interesting statistics to tell you after this play. I saw him before the game, and I said that Tim was over watching baseball practice early in the week. He says, Tim Foley knows what the national pastime is. <laughs> Spoken like a baseball coach. Williams, incomplete. He wanted to get out there on the left side to Tim Green, but too many Tennessee defenders. That one just got away. But as you know, I was a baseball coach in the spring, and, and so I was trying to refine my skills. We're talking Little League here. Hey, you know, what do you mean Little League? <laughs> but anyway. Mark the name of Tommy Foley down. But anyhow, we're talking to Polk, and he says that 5% of the players that sign a pro contract to, to play Major League Baseball, 5% of them ever play one day in the majors. And out of those 5%, only 6% play four years or more. The Ron's telling his collegiate baseball players who are good players uh, go to class young man because exactly. you're probably going to be working for a living that's what the percentages are saying you're watching sec football on the turner broadcasting system it is fourth down seven for the bulldogs they're going to of course trailing 31 to three go for it with 738 to go in the ball game only four men rushing for tennessee williams with plenty of time Rodney Peters couldn't hold on to it. Would have been a first down. Well, the Bulldogs self-destructing today. We said it before and we'll say it again. There's a good example. A lack of concentration there. I'm sure that the young man Rodney Peters heard some footsteps coming with the Tennessee defensive backs about to lay a big hit on him. But nevertheless, he should have caught it. The Bulldogs turn it over at the 36-yard line. You want to find know how tough it is in the fourth quarter, look at those stats. These are the totals this year counting this game. Tennessee 37 to 3 in the fourth quarter and now Tennessee has substituted a redshirt freshman from Passaic, New Jersey at quarterback his name is Sterling Hinton and a lot of people say Hinton reminds reminds them of the Holloways and Streeters at Tennessee that he can do something on the corner as they like to say Mando Davis the ball carrier but this will 
This is potentially the quarterback of the future for the University of Tennessee, Sterling Hinton. Talk to Walt Harris in terms of what he looks for in a quarterback, and the first thing he looks for is an arm, and after that, looks for if a young man's got character, will he be dedicated to developing his skills? They feel like Hinton's going to be that type of player. Vando Davis with the stop in the backfield. The penalty is going to be against the University of Tennessee. James Williams playing very well today. Holding is the call against Tennessee. Looks like number 68, Joey Howard. He played a little offense and defense last week against Colorado State. So Tennessee going to get out of this game with a win with six minutes and 50 seconds to go, leading 31 to 3. Holding, offense, penalty decline, third down. Tennessee has a week off next week, and then Auburn at Knoxville. He number 68 had, a tr had, had trouble getting his head up in front and just got a... slipped an elbow behind him, locked him up a little. It's always, 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 always tempting. Those offensive players can use their hands now. It becomes harder and harder to tell whether it's holding or not. Hinton, let's check his arm. Oh, my. Oh, ho oh. Sterling Hinton gets a great catch from the senior, Kennard McGuire. Oh, there's a 30-06 on the end of that right arm. 51 yards. And this is the type of pass you'd like to get up earlier, and uh, he's got somebody in his face. And you'd like to get it up higher in the air, but... Kennard McGuire does just an exceptional job coming back and adjusting on the ball. Trying to keep... Yeah! All right. Kennard says, hope the folks in Posaic are watching that one. Tennessee with a big lead, and they're just running it now. That pulls with the ball down there inside the 20-yard line. 31-3, Tennessee. We were talking about uh, Auburn. Auburn will be off next week. University of Tennessee will be off, and both of them will be preparing for that big game in two weeks at Knoxville, and we'll have that telecast for you here on the Superstation. Both of them will probably be undefeated. Auburn playing Kansas at Auburn today. Here's Poles. Close to the first down, and about the seven-yard line. And as you look at Tennessee's schedule down the line, I said this earlier, Tim, I know you, you agree, tend to agree with me, said if they could get into this, into the Auburn game in good shape, and, and we'll, that remains to be seen, then it'll be California at Knoxville, Alabama at Birmingham, Tech at Knoxville, Georgia Tech, Boston College up there, Louisville at Knoxville, Ole Miss at Knoxville, Kentucky at Lexington and Vanderbilt. Tennessee's got a shot to be a dark horse championship contender in the SEC this year. Oh, I don't think, yeah, I think it, it's beyond dark horse now. now Every, it is. Yeah, everybody was concerned about whether their defense was going to come to play this year because last year that they, they had such a problem. There were such high expectations defensively, and uh, uh, Ken Donahue was saying uh, maybe just a little bit self-satisfied. You know, when you eat all those banquet dinners and you listen to people tell, how, tell you how great you are and you're uh, 19 years old, you think sometimes you just gotta, you got to show up to win the next year. And uh, it's, it's week after week after week you have to go out and prove it again. Ovanik and Hunt should be back for Tennessee's defense for the Auburn game, too. Poles gets the first down. 4.57 to go in this ball game. The Mississippi State Bulldogs uh, have a, a relatively good schedule, favorable schedule for them up until the, the end of the year. It'll be Louisiana State next week here at Starkville, then Florida at Gainesville, Memphis State at Starkville, Southern Miss at Jackson, but then, get this, they call it the November Nightmare. It starts in October this year with Auburn there, Alabama at Birmingham, Tulane at Starkville, then LSU at Baton Rouge, and Ole Miss at Jackson. So the last part of the year, as usual, is going to be really rugged for the Bulldogs. First and goal from the six. William Howard. Big tackle by 38, James Williams. He's had himself a good defensive day today for Mississippi State. He batted the ball out of the air two times early in the game when Francis was trying to throw short. He now has six tackles in the game. He's sophomore from Natchez. And he and Middlebrook have been going, on, going at it all afternoon. 
John Rollins, two tight ends. Because they felt like, I think, with, with the Cedric Chorus out of the game, they felt like they could work on Williams a little bit. And uh, as you pointed out, he has responded well. Hinton, four for four for 111 yards passing in 1987. Tennessee just running it up the middle. That was Poles again. Roland Poles from Caledonia, New York. Bates brings him down. They're trying to add a little bit of size in the, the middle of that Mississippi State defensive front. They've got Bobby Barlow, who's a converted tight end from last year, playing defensive uh, tackle. And they had hoped on redshirting him and try to beef him up a little bit, but uh, you know, he was pressed into service. And he's a hustler. He's quick, but uh, not very big. Third down goal from the four for Tennessee. <laughs> Hinton's going to keep it. Touchdown. Sterling Hinton, the redshirt freshman quarterback, throws a 50-yard pass, then he runs it in from the four-yard line in Tennessee, really laying it on the Bulldogs. He rides, pulls into the line, gets Bates to bite on that one, and then it's just slithering in. Six points. The Volunteers. They're going to be strong, Bob. All right, you have to understand, they're doing this without some excellent players, you know, and uh, and I would say that Hovannik and Hunt will probably be healthy by the Auburn game. And so, Tennessee takes a 38-3 lead as Hinton runs it into the end zone, also showed an excellent arm on that drive. High fashion here at Scott Field in Starkville, Mississippi. 85 degrees. Beautiful afternoon. If you're a Mississippi State fan, that's about all you can say. They're losing 38 to 3 to Tennessee with 318 remaining in the ballgame. Orlando Wade is back to take the kick return. True freshman. Gets it to the 20, and down he goes. He was stopped by 31, Tom Bronson. Some scores around the nation. Georgia with no problem at all. Large State with four touchdowns last time I checked. 41-7 in the fourth. Oklahoma struggling with North Carolina, but the North Carolina's pretty strong, too. Pittsburgh, easy game against NC State. Boston College wins against Temple, 28-7. Syracuse leading Rutgers. And Air Force ahead of TCU. Mike Davis now playing quarterback as Albert Williams has gone out for a rest because this game is history. It's pitched to Fair. David Fair. Now, now you see his speed. He's chased by the speed merchant, Dennis, Tennessee backs, and they can't catch him. 21 was Preston Warren. The freshman tried to catch up to him. Six was Tony Nelson. And David Fair, wham, bam, thank you. 79 yards. finally breaks one and you had said it earlier Tim the good backs like to keep getting it and getting it because you know sooner or later they're going to get it out there and look at the speed he just left the defensive backs now the track stars McDaniel Peppers were not in there for Tennessee here's the point after Joel Logan it's good and MSU gets their first touchdown of the day with 2.57 to go in the ball game. And now they trail Tennessee 38 to 10. David Fair can fly. We talked about the great running to eye backs being able to make ground back to the inside. Looking for the cutback, and there it is. What was it? He's got it walled off by uh, Ty Johnson, and then he's off and flying. Tony Nelson trying to chase him. Preston Warren. They can't catch him. He was embarrassed when he fumbled the ball, and uh, he's got something to show these hometown fans here in Starkville. 133 yards rushing on the day for David Fair. And, and one touchdown. And he weighs, he's 227. You know, I mean, he was 220 when they wrote the program, but, uh, you know, he's eating, he's eating good here, and he is, as you say, rock hard, and he's going to be a great athlete. So David Fair and Reggie Cobb put on a running back show here for the... Freshman runners. Two fifty-seven to go in the ball game, and Greg James, the kickoff man, is going to probably attempt an onside kick here. Mississippi State trailing thirty-eight to ten. 
Got to go 10 yards and isn't going to. They'll just spot it right there at the. It has to go 10 yards for it to be Mississippi State's ball. So even though they fell on it, it's still Tennessee. Is what I'm trying to tell you. Mississippi State has more total offense than Tennessee today. 418 to 384. Tennessee has it on the board. 38 to 10. Next week at 1230 Eastern Time, Tim and I and our crew will be in Legion Field in Birmingham, Alabama for Florida and Alabama. Hinton hands it to Vando Davis. He dives forward, clock down to 250. Tim, you've been, I've, I've been touting Tennessee as a team better than most people around the nation think they're going to be this year. And you've been saying that the same is true in your opinion about Alabama. I do. I think Alabama's got a, a lot of high-quality players there. Uh, Perkins and his staff did a great job recruiting with, while they were there, and uh, I, you know, I think uh, Curry is going to do a fine, fine job for them. And they got uh, Don Lindsay there as a defensive coordinator, so nobody's going to score a lot of points on them. First I think they'll be, run. Excuse me. I'm sorry. I think they'll beat uh, Penn State Vando tonight. Vando Davis with the carry. That'll be a tough one. Penn State is favored at State College, Pennsylvania. Alabama has Florida in the game that we'll telecast next week. Then Alabama will play at Vanderbilt, Southwest Louisiana at Birmingham, and uh, Mississippi State clobbered them. And then Memphis State, Tennessee at Birmingham, October 17th, of course, a big one. Toward the end of the year, though, the last five games for Tennessee, uh, for Alabama, will be Tennessee, Mississippi State, LSU, Notre Dame, and Auburn. So they've got a real difficult schedule at the end and David Fair making up for the fumble with a 79 yard touchdown run you know, and, uh, running back also has to know when to turn it back in there and fight too there's sometimes when there's just nothing home and you got to get you got to get down you can only take sh so many shots in an afternoon that's Bon Reeves he's the 18 year old freshman from Knoxville being helped off the field for Tennessee uh, report remind you again that a very big blow to the offensive line plans for Mississippi State happened in the first half and that's when Gary Frank got a break in his left leg the pro prospect 6'4 300 pound tackle for Mississippi State has a, a small break but nevertheless a break in his leg about 10 yards on the carry for Mando Davis clock down to 143 and counting we'll have all the college football scores today's action very heavy schedule today coming your way immediately after Craig Sager will be in the studio in Atlanta Johnny Majors who never will quite say yeah I really think this bunch is gonna really roll he's the, the classic coach he's always finding a looking for something that he can get better with but he has to be encouraged with all the injuries Tennessee has suffered suffered here early in the year that they're gonna leave Starkville three and O. Oh. Look at this run by Roland Poles, the 250-pound freshman fullback inside the 10. A minute 14 to go in the game. First and goal, Tennessee. That was a gain of 15 yards. Now watch this. If you can stop this guy, if you can stop this rascal, show some quickness. Nifty. Fights off one blocker. Pop. See you later. If you can stop him, understand that you're looking at Reggie Cobb. <laughs> and if you try to stack your defense inside, they've got those fleet-footed wide receivers out there that can hurt you. This is Vando Davis, short of five-yard line. Clock down to 46 and counting. Tennessee leading 38 to 10, and Johnny Majors will probably just keep running this right up the middle of the line and let the clock run out. They'll have to play at least one more play. And Rocky Felker have his team be one and one after this ball game, and he's got to get them ready for next week and hopefully keep the heads up of this Mississippi State Bulldog team. They've got a tough schedule this year. He says he thinks that this is potentially a better team than last year's Mississippi State Bulldog team, which got off to the six and one start. On the sweep to the one yard line. Tennessee denied the end zone. Bando Davis tackle there, and the clock is going to just run out. I'm a, six, five, and counting. I don't think there's any question that he's got more skill on this team than he had on last year's team. Tennessee with a 38 to 10 victory, eight wins in a row. Tennessee has not lost a game since November 8th of 86. They'll rest next week and then play at Auburn on the, or at Tennessee against Auburn on the Superstation in two weeks.